So uh, when children come to the emergency department, as a part of their workup, their diagnosis, understanding what's going on, we often have to do different medical and diagnostic procedures, and those themselves, unfortunately, can often cause pain for children. So this procedural pain bottom line recommendations, we were trying to synthesize the evidence to help us treat um, and, or avoid pain for children having those diagnostic procedures. I think the two main things that come to mind when I think about the most important aspects of procedural pain would be one, that it is it has consequences if we don't treat it both short and long term for children, negative consequences. And so when we know children are on a developmental trajectory towards adulthood, and negative um, experiences can influence how they'll ultimately shape as adults. So anything we can do to avoid those would be desirable. The second thing would be is that sometimes when we think about ways to minimize pain, our minds jump straight to medications. And I think it's important to know that there's actually a number of steps we can take um, that are complementary uh, to, the, to the medications um, that can be used in adjunct or separately. So for instance, there's physical ma ma maneuvers that we can do, there's psychological interventions, and then the pharmacological interventions. I'm sometimes asked um, how to integrate this into practice and what it means practically when we talk about minimizing children's pain. So uh, physical interventions, for instance, might be um, the way we position a child when we're doing a procedure. So traditionally, we might picture a child getting an IV is held down on a bed by strangers. If we're lucky, the parent is close by, and then another stranger with a needle is poking them and the child is distraught. Surprisingly, for some people, um, you can actually accomplish the same procedure with the parent holding the child and or the caregiver, and there's way less distress for the child, way less distress for the people involved in the procedure. So that's a physical example of something you can seamlessly integrate into your practice. A psychological one might be the words we choose um, when we're helping a child, um, the, um, the way we interact with them, for example. And then pharmacologic, there's a number of of uh, inexpensive treatments that are not now available that we can use to uh, to prevent or treat pain. So things like sucrose uh, drops, um, topical anesthetic creams, lidocaine jellies, you know, things that are fairly inexpensive and widely available. But if we don't know we need them, we don't stop. Them. I think one of the challenges that many people face when they're trying to integrate um, good procedural pain management into their practice is um, worries about um, flow, ED flow, and um, timeliness of the intervention, and that it might be very difficult to to uh, include. So I would challenge um, my colleagues to um, on that in in a sense that um, if we anticipate the need ahead of time, we can actually intervene early and in many ways and very likely save time. So for instance, if you have a child with acute gastroenteritis who's moderately dehydrated and our triage nurse has identified this, if he or she places the topical anesthetic cream right at triage, that actually speeds up the process because by the time the child is in the, in the treatment room in the back, they're ready to get their IV right away. And there's ample evidence to actually support that when children's pain is better managed, procedures happen faster and require less uh, repeat attempts. So it's actually a time saver in the long run. So anticipating, I think, is a big part of it. Again, um, oral sucrose drops or inserting a urinary catheter, if it's already in your department, if it's easily accessible, if the nurses don't need an order from a physician to access it, it's because it's not a medication per se, then their chances of using it increase tremendously. I think in an ideal world, we treat adults' procedural pain as well, because I truly can't think of any reason why adults should be subject to pain when they have to go through diagnostic testing as well. Um, having said that, I think the one thing that I see with older children, where I think we're subject to a bit of our biases, is that I've heard um, colleagues tell me that older children um, don't need the topical anesthetic that's meant for babies. And I challenge you to find me um, a cohort of adults or adolescents who would prefer to have pain when they couldn't. So most people appreciate um, that time taken to apply that topical anesthetic, for instance, or use that distraction with um, an iPad or, um, or, a, or a video um, to help ease their pain as well. So older children experience pain as well and benefit from those interventions.
course, some interventions are age-specific, so going back to the oral sucrose example, and that's really only been shown to be useful in the infant age group, so I wouldn't necessarily recommend that for a teenager. Our bottom line recommendations for procedural pain stem from a very large body of literature, um, and it would, I think, would be fairly overwhelming as a practitioner for me to go and try to read all the source articles to try to figure out what I need. So um, there are some review articles which are housed within the um, repository of evidence at TREP, so that's definitely one place where I'd recommend people go to the website. Um, the other place where if you're looking to practically implement some of these policies or procedures would be uh, the CAPC uh, website, so that's the Canadian um, Association of um, Pediatric Health Centres, and they have a wonderful open access uh, repository of toolkits for each of these procedures that we've talked about in this bottom line recommendation, where they provided um, a, a toolkit for each intervention. Uh, with items that range from educational PowerPoint presentations to, uh, to videos aimed at parents and exemplars of uh, policy to help you implement these changes in your local emergency department.